we have at Russian Recording what pretty sure and, and a lot seem to confirm is one of the most complete and thorough Soviet microphone collections in the world. In the 90s, there was a brand called Octava that was like the first affordable but really great sounding microphone. And that's when I was in high school and I bought a couple like, oh, that's cool, I'm Russian. These are Russian mics, they sound great. And then I kind of went down the rabbit hole. Those like the early years of eBay. And I started finding like these old vintage Soviet mics, some ribbon mics, and I bought a couple. They were so cheap back then and I discovered, wow, these sound great. And then I did my internship at Electrical Audio and they have this, a, a bunch of really cool vintage Soviet mics that I wasn't aware of, and I fell in love with them. And it was just like sort of a coincidence or ser serendipitous that I was also Russian, but these mics, regardless of my nationality or upbringing or my family, were just really fantastic. They, they look like no other mic you've ever seen, this really cool Art Deco style. They're built really well, and the most important thing is they sounded just stunning. The Soviet-era Russian microphones were made for certain purposes in different factories manufactured by the government. One factory made only microphones used for film or cinema and classical music, made to be the best, and all the money went into the product. And as he learned about their history, he became obsessed with this microphone, and he began seeking them out. Soon he had collected 80 different Russian microphones from this era. But his collection doesn't just feature classic Russian microphones or German microphones, but an American classic microphone that stretches back 100 years. So RCA developed only 50 of these microphones and they were commissioned and developed specifically for New York's Radio City Music Hall. And um, those 50 mics lived in there till the 80s and then when they replaced the system, some of the mics got thrown away and then some of them made them out and so we actually have one of them. I think only 12 are known to exist. And we have one RCA PB31, um, which is almost 100 years old now. And what's phenomenal about it is it sounds absolutely beautiful. And it's just amazing that, you know, so many years later, the first ribbon microphone sounds better than, you know, most of the ribbon mics in our collection. The microphone collection is a very small piece of Mike's growing one-of-a-kind collection. One of his prized possessions, one of the rarest items to be featured in the recording studio, is the mixing console. While most modern studios rely on computers and software to mix audio and effects, Russian Recording uses an analog mixing board that has been a Bloomington staple for many years before Mike got his hands on it. Based in Bloomington's Echo Park Studios, owned by John Mellencamp's guitar player, the console has been used for many classic albums in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. When I was a student, my first year, we did a tour of that studio, and I saw that console, the Sphere Eclipse, and thought, I don't know anything about this thing, but I want that console. I didn't know how rare it was or the history behind it, but it looked just like, like a weird combination of, a, like it was made out of Legos or something, I don't know, it just looked so cool. And sure enough, in about 2010, I found out that Echo Park was selling their Sphere Eclipse console. I, again, somehow convinced the bank to loan me money to buy this console. I finally got in my studio, and then I started learning a lot more about it. The Sphere consoles are actually pretty legendary, and a lot of people don't know about them because so few were made. I believe 52 were made. There's 12 left in existence that are working in the world. And ours, it turns out, was one of the very first ones made, and it's the only Eclipse Type 2 ever made. That's a really rare and important piece for us. We also have a lot of rare vintage instruments. So we've got a fully refurbished uh, Fender Rhodes, um, a Wurlitzer piano, a lot of rare guitars, um, 
If a band wants a Stratocaster sound, they probably have a Stratocaster. If they want a Gibson Les Paul sound, they probably have a Gibson Les Paul. So I have sort of weirder guitars, like if they want to have something unique or different. Same, same with that, we have a lot of like really rare and interesting effects units, a lot of vintage stuff. Um, the same with guitar pedals, like it goes on and on. So when a band comes here, they're not like wishing they had something, like there's more than they could ever need.